Good morning, everyone. It has been very cozy up here in the mountains this week. We have been getting so much snow, but I want to take you back in time to this past summer. I had a couple of goals this summer. One of them was to just really enjoy the warmth and spend as much time as possible outside up in these mountains and just enjoying this time of year. It was such a beautiful season. The colors felt so vibrant this year. And then I had another goal and that was to get my act together with the garden, which was only semi-successful. I did end up growing a lot of things, preserving and fermenting quite a bit of the harvest, but the garden was kind of a mess. It was a beautiful mess. And honestly, I'm happy that instead of stressing over all the weeds, I just enjoyed the very precious days of sunshine because it feels like we have so few of them, you know? And then I had one last goal for the summer and that was to write another cookbook. After I came back from my travels this summer, that was when me and my brother really started working full time on the book, which ended up taking a lot longer than I expected. There was just a ton of recipe testing together. Me and my brother photographed, wrote, designed, and did everything ourselves. And I'm honestly so proud of how it turned out. It's been almost half a year now, and I am so excited to say that it's finally done. I know you guys have been waiting a really long time for this, and I am so sorry that it took so long, but we just wanted everything to be perfect. And yeah, oh my gosh, the photos, wow. I'm so proud of us. We both don't really know very much about photography, but I just feel like they turned out so perfect. This book was definitely a labor of love. I didn't ever think we would finish it, if I'm being honest. The focus of the book is on winter foods, warm food, and seasonal to the colder months. And all of the food I am showing here is in the book. And yeah, I'm just so excited to offer this to all of you. Thank you all so much for your support. I really, really appreciate all of you that end up purchasing this book and yeah, I just really hope you enjoy all of these recipes. So as the days and nights pass here in the mountains, we enter into the darkest time of the year. During these weeks, we have the shortest days and the longest nights. And it feels like in the winter, the sunsets last for so much longer and are so much more vibrant than usual. Nature is amazing during a time of death where there isn't much color to the world, it gives us the most vibrant and beautiful skies. This time of year always feels so special, like we get to embrace the art of relaxation. With such short days, we are kind of forced to take it easy. We can finally cozy up and do nothing after a season of doing so much and the silence that falls onto these mountains when it snows. It's beautiful. And we spend so much time these days in the darkness. But to me, there's something so magical about the energy of being in the dark for so long. I always feel much more spiritual during this time of year. Like I can finally give myself permission to slow down and really listen to my own intuition. Good morning, you guys. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful here. It's been snowing for like a week straight and it is crazy how pretty everything looks outside. Like the trees are covered in white snow and everything is just fluffy and beautiful and so cozy. It is the middle of December and this week I'm gonna start working on some of my Christmas gifts that I'll be giving to my family. I plan on 
giving a lot of handmade gifts, so I need to start early. I feel like I'm already a little bit late. Some of the gifts I have in mind are gonna take a while to make, but that's what I'm gonna do this week. So the first thing I'm gonna make for my homemade gifts this year is homemade deodorant. This is a very simple recipe that uses very accessible ingredients. It also works incredibly well. And I'm not just saying that. Me and my whole family have been using this deodorant for over 10 years. And when one of us runs out, we will like all fight over what is left, literally. So you want to melt coconut oil, shea butter, and beeswax in a double broiler and then you add baking soda and arrowroot powder. You can also use cornstarch if you don't have arrowroot. And I'm just gonna show you here after it has cooled what the consistency is. It's soft and buttery and it's really easy to use. Okay, so around six months ago, in the peak of summer, I used some calendula and chamomile from the garden to make some herb shampoo bars for my gifts this year. This was me cutting them six months ago, and the reason I made them so long ago, firstly was to utilize my fresh herbs that I grew, but also soap takes two to three months to cure, so you kind of have to make it in advance. If you want to gift soap this year, no worries. I have also made it in December and then you can just put a date on the soap when it is okay to use. Okay, so this next thing is something I've wanted to make for a very long time now. Last winter, about a year ago, I went to Mexico and bought these vanilla beans from a farmer and I'm going to infuse the vanilla into bourbon whiskey to make vanilla extract. This is a really simple to make. You just pour alcohol into a jar with vanilla beans. I did five vanilla beans per eight ounces of alcohol. And then you want to just let it sit for three to four months, ideally. So I just made a label for these that tells you when you can use it. In a perfect world, I would have made these months ago, but it's also kind of exciting to give a gift that requires you to wait for it to be ready to use. Okay, so the next thing I am making is taper candles. I'm using pure 100% beeswax to make these candles. Here's the thing about making your own candles. You end up saving so much money, you guys. Beeswax candles are very expensive, but raw beeswax is pretty cheap for the most part. Although I will be upfront with you, these candles did take me like an entire day to make. I did other things while I was waiting for the candles to dry in between dips, but they did take an entire day. So just forewarning if you decide to embark on this journey of candle making. As beautiful as this winter has been, I am remembering why I leave every winter. It's not the cold because actually, strangely enough, I have a really high cold tolerance. Like I can be outside for a long time in the snow in just a t-shirt and be fine. I think it's because my ancestors came from Northern Scandinavia where it is extremely cold. So the cold doesn't bother me much. But what does bother me is living in such a small space. Oh my gosh, sometimes it just drives me crazy. And I feel like in the summer, it's not really an issue because I spend so much time outside, but it can really get claustrophobic in here in the winter, especially with two people. Life up here in the mountains already is pretty rough and rugged. We are very far from anemones and the store is an hour's drive away. And then adding to that is just a very small living space. So I've been kind of struggling, you guys. And I'm honestly not sure how long I am going to last up here. But this is a sourdough pie crust, which is insane tasting. Oh my gosh, it's like the best thing I've ever had. The sourness mixed with the sweet apples. I also added some local cranberries and Wow, this turned out so good. The sourdough pie crust is in the cookbook. If you guys are wondering, I would eat this every day if I could.
Okay, so I've been trying to figure out what to get Logan for Christmas. I think for one of his gifts, I'm gonna sew him something. I'm not really sure what. I'm a little nervous making something for a man's body. I've only ever sewed women's clothes. I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. I need to go into town today to get some fabric. I'm a little nervous though because it is very snowy outside <laughs> and town is very far away. It has been snowing so much these days. It is very cold outside, but it's so beautiful. I'm gonna go jump in the river. I'm dreading it, and it's something I don't wanna do, but I feel like that's the reason why I should do it. Every time I do something that I don't wanna do, I always feel so strong, and I don't know, it just makes me feel really capable in other areas of my life. Okay, so I just finished these pajamas. I feel like they look so cute and cozy. I'm gonna wrap them up and put them under the tree. There is something so satisfying about wrapping a present. Do you guys get that same feeling of just like childlike excitement whenever you put a present under the tree? I just feel so much joy in my heart. Like I cannot wait for that person to open the present. Oh, this is the first time the sun has been out in like two weeks <laughs> and it just feels so incredible. This feeling of the sun on my skin. Oh my gosh. Mm. Since we live in a valley, the sun will set over that mountain around 12 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> So even when the sun does come out, we really only get like three hours of it before it sets. <laughs> and I'm really cherishing those three hours right now. Who knows when it will be back. Feels so good. Okay, so on this night, I made a potato stuffed naan. This is actually a recipe I learned how to make and ate a ton when I was living in India. It's one of my favorites to make. Logan thinks the inside tastes like cheese. There's actually no cheese in it. It's made of potatoes, but it is super yummy and it's also in the book. Anyways, you guys, I hope you're having just such a beautiful holiday season. I hope you are spending these nights cozied up in lots of blankets, drinking hot chocolate, and um, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you all next week. Okay, bye-bye.